you look at a chart of your average carnivore, your average omnivore, herbivore, and frugivore, you'll find that we fall completely. Every organ in our body is that of an herbivore, frugivore, not of an omnivore or carnivore. We have two hands and two feet, and we walk erect. All of the carnivores have four feet and perform their locomotion using all fours. Tails. Carnivores have tails. Humans do not. Tongues. Only the truly carnivorous animals have rasping, rough tongues. All other creatures have smooth tongues. Claws. A lion's claws are like razors. Our lack of claws makes ripping skin or tough flesh extremely difficult. We possess much weaker, flat fingernails instead. Opposable thumbs. Our opposable thumbs make us extremely well equipped to collect the meal of fruit in a matter of a few seconds. Most people find the process effortless. All we have to do is pick it. The claws of carnivores allow them to catch their prey in a matter of seconds as well. We could no more catch and rip the skin or tough flesh of a deer or antelope than a lion could pick mangoes or bananas. Births. Humans usually have children one at a time. Carnivores typically give birth to litters. Colon formation. Our convoluted colons are quite different in design from the smooth colons of carnivorous animals. Intestinal length. Our intestinal tract measures roughly 12 times the length of our torsos, about 30 feet. This allows for the slow absorption of sugars and other waterborne nutrients from fruit. In contrast, the digestive tract of a carnivore is only three times the length of its torso. This is necessary to avoid rotting or decomposition of flesh inside the animal. The carnivore depends upon highly acidic secretions to facilitate rapid digestion and absorption in its very short tube. Still, the putrefaction of proteins and the rancidity of fats is evident in their feces. Mammary glands. The multiple teats on the abdomens of carnivores do not coincide with the pair of mammary glands on the chest of humans. Sleep. Humans spend roughly two-thirds of every 24-hour cycle actively awake. Carnivores typically sleep and rest from 18 to 20 hours per day, and sometimes more. Microbial tolerance. Most carnivores can digest microbes that would be deadly for humans, such as those that cause botulism. Perspiration. Humans sweat from pores on their entire body. Carnivores sweat from the tongue only. Vision. Our sense of vision responds to the full spectrum of color, making it possible to distinguish ripe from unripe fruit at a distance. Meat eaters do not typically see in full color. Drinking. Should we need to drink water, we can suck it with our lips, but we cannot lap it up. Carnivores' tongues protrude outward so they can lap water when they need to drink. Vitamin C. Carnivores manufacture their own vitamin C. For us, Vitamin C is an essential nutrient that we must get from our food. Jaw movement. Our ability to grind our food is unique to plant eaters. Meat eaters have no lateral movement in their jaws. Teeth. The molars of carnivores are pointed and sharp. Ours are primarily flat for mashing food. Our quote unquote canine teeth bear no resemblance to true fangs, nor do we have a mouth full of them as a true carnivore does. Tolerance for fat. We do not handle more than small quantities of fat well. Meat eaters thrive on a high fat diet. Saliva and urine pH. All of the plant eating creatures, including healthy humans, maintain alkaline saliva and urine most of the time. The saliva and urine of meat eating animals, however, is highly acidic. Stomach acid pH. The pH level of the hydrochloric acid that humans produce in their stomachs generally ranges about 3 to 4 or higher, but can go as low as 2.0, 0 equaling the most acidic, 7 equaling neutral, and 14 being the most alkaline. 
The stomach acid of cats and other meat eaters can be in the one range and usually runs in the twos. Because the pH scale is logarithmic, this means the stomach acid of a carnivore is at least 10 times stronger than that of a human and can be 100 or even 1,000 times stronger. Uricase. True carnivores secrete an enzyme called uricase to metabolize the uric acid in flesh. We secrete none and so must neutralize this strong acid with our own alkaline minerals, primarily calcium. The resulting calcium urate crystals are one of the many pathogens of meat eating, in this case giving rise to or contributing to gout, arthritis, rheumatism, and bursitis. Cleanliness. We are the most particular of all creatures about the cleanliness of our food. Carnivores are the least picky and will eat dirt, bugs, organic debris, and other items along with their food. Natural appetite. I saved this one for last, because it really, this should say it all. Our mouths water at the sight and smells of the produce market. These are living foods, the source of our sustenance. But the smell of animals usually puts us off. Carnivores' mouths water at the sight of prey, and they react to the smell of animals as though they sense food. Our anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, and psychology all indicate that we are not carnivores. To say that carnivores eat carnage or flesh does not accurately portray such creatures. Animals that live on other animals usually eat raw meat straight from the carcass with relish. Carnivores consume most of the animals, not merely the flesh, eating the muscle meat as well as the organs and lapping up the warm fresh blood and otherly bodily fluids with gusto. They delight in the guts and their partially digested contents. They even crush, split, and eat the smaller bones and their marrow and gristle. Most of us love animals as fellow creatures on earth. We do not salivate at the idea of crushing the life out of a rabbit with our bare hands and teeth. And the thought of eating one in a freshly killed state is repulsive. Oh, I hope this doesn't fill the bag or something. We certainly do not enjoy chewing on bones. It's so squidgy. Gristle, entrails, chunks of raw fat and flesh, and the hair and vermin that inevitably accompany them. We cannot imagine slurping hot blood, getting it all over our faces, hands, and bodies. These behaviors are alien to our natural disposition and are actually sickening. This looks strange. We'll, we'll rub it. Uh oh. So if you look at your pet cat and aren't too enticed, it's alright. It's alright. You were never designed to eat them in the first place. Feel free to go down to your local produce market, enjoy the sights and smells, and pick yourself some whole, fresh, ripe, raw, delicious fruits and vegetables.